You, O Lord, are good and forgiving. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. You are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. O oh, give thanks to you, O oh Lord, my God, with my whole heart. Baptized into Christ, we are welcomed into the gates of God's presence. Today, we hear the most important commandment. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Let us confess our failure to keep these commandments and plead to God for help. I, a poor sinner, plead guilty before God of all my sins. I have lived as if God did not matter and as if I mattered most. I have not honored my Lord's name as I should. My worship and prayers have faltered. I have not let his love have its way with me, and so my love for others has failed. There are those whom I have hurt and those whom I have failed to help. My thoughts and desires have been soiled with sin. Almighty God, have mercy upon me, forgive my sins, and lead me to everlasting life. Amen. Do you believe that my forgiveness is God's forgiveness? Yes. Let it be done for you as you believe, in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, in his name and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. This time we invite the children forward for Mr. Keel and the children's message. Today we're going to talk about the Ten Commandments. What do we know about the Ten Commandments? Anything? They follow Jesus' words. They follow Jesus' words. Good. You know there's ten of them, correct? All right. Do we happen to know any of them? No? Okay. On your father and mother. Good. Respectful of your parents. There's one on there, uh, do not steal. That's probably a good one. Do not kill. Uh, you shall have no other gods. Don't commit adultery. Remember the Sabbath day. Uh, don't misuse God's name. Okay? So there's a bunch of them on there. Well, we're going to hear today that some Pharisees come forward and they say, God, which one do you think is the most important out of those commandments? Do you know which one he said was most important? Any ideas? Well, he does a summary. Do you know what a summary is? He takes something that's really big and he puts it into a very small sentence. So he says, you know what? The commandments actually fit two different spots. The first three commandments talk about us and God. We are supposed to have no other gods. We shouldn't misuse God's name. We should remember the Sabbath, which is the Sunday, and, and come and, and see God. Okay? So it's between us and God. Kind of like the up and down on a cross. Between us and God. And the other seven are between us and others. Don't steal. Don't murder. Don't bear false witness, which means don't say bad things about. Don't, don't spread rumors. So it kind of makes the form of a cross with his law here. And he summarizes it and says... Well, the most important commandment is the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and with all your strength. Do you think that will follow the first three commandments, if we love God with everything? No. You don't think so? Mm -hmm. I think so. I think that would sum that up. And then the second thing he says, but the second one is just as important, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. So, if we love God, and we love our neighbor, then we're seeing this ultimate shape of love that we have in front of us. Okay, it's all over the church. It's on the LWML symbol you'll see today. The cross, reminding us of God's ultimate love for us, because we broke every one of these. Do you know that? We break all these commandments. Do you break these commandments? You, do you break these commandments? You do. You, 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 you. Okay. So, the only way we're saved is by God's love on that cross, sending his son to die for us. Let's pray about that. Heavenly Father, we thank you today that you gave us those commandments as a guide and as a way to help us understand the best way to, to love you and to love each other. Please help us to be able to do so. And help, us remind, help remind us of the ultimate love that you gave us by giving up your son to die on the cross for us. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Get that back. first lesson is from the book of Ezekiel, <clears throat> chapter 36. This is not just God speaking to the Old Testament people a long time ago. He addresses it to Israel because you are the new Israel, God's people today. So the Lord is speaking in this passage. He is speaking to you both in his condemnation and in his promise. 
Ezekiel speaking for the Lord says, Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when through you I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. From all, all your idols I will cleanse you, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. The word of God for the people of God. The second lesson is from the book of 1 Peter, the first chapter. This second lesson picks up on the, on the first lesson and expands the idea of what God has done and is doing in the lives of his people. Peter writes, Knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in these last times for the sake of you who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere and, and brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. The word of God for the people of God. Please rise for the Alleluia verse and the reading of the gospel. gospel is recorded in the gospel of Mark, the 12th chapter. <clears throat> Here the scribe is looking to Jesus for, uh, the, to name the greatest commandment, and instead, as, as, uh, as Peter Keel said just earlier, instead Jesus gives a quick summary of the entire law, love God, love others. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, Which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered, The most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. O God of mercy. 
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Recognize who God is, love Him, and love each other. It's simple, right? Hmm? It's nothing new, actually. I mean, oftentimes we might see this phrase in church marketing somewhere and we think, wow, that's pretty profound. It's, it's been around. For quite some time, uh, beyond the sacred earliest of the Jewish prayers to the giving of the law, all the way back to the creation of the world. You see, after all, love God, love each other. This was the original way of life, well before Adam and Eve, our first parents, rejected their creator. This was the intended blueprint, love God, love one another. This was his blueprint for all of God's creation, for us to love our creator and to have that love lived out in love to one another. Love God, love another. This was the answer posed to the question by the scribes to our Lord from today's text in Mark 12, which was just read. Now, a little background here. The, the scribes, they were, they were kind of like the professionals of the day. If you, if you take a little bit of a lawyer and a judge and a professor and a researcher and you blend them all together, and then you sprinkle in someone who was affluent in languages, reading, writing, all that good stuff, you would have the scribes. They were the academy of the day, if you will. And so, as Jesus was in town and they found that he was answering his, their questions very well, one of the scribes asked Jesus a question that was rooted in the law, in the intent, in the spirit of it, if you will. Now, you know, people like to assign all levels of importance to things, don't we? We like to create a hierarchy. This is first, this is second. This is the most important thing. This is the idea that is above all. We want to know what is best, what is important, what is first. In this case, the scribe's question kind of lended itself to that. What is the most important commandment? Jesus' response, of course, was a confession that everyone would have recognized immediately from Deuteronomy 6. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. This confession of who the Lord is from that sacred prayer known as the Shema 
starts with acknowledging the nearness of the kingdom, recognizing who our Lord indeed is, that he and he alone is God. And from this confession about him, Jesus begins to uh, further explain, if you will, a command or two commands or a command in two parts, however you wish to look at that. The important thing is this, love God, love another. Love God. We are to love our creator with everything that we have, everything that we are. There is simply no ambiguity here, no way to mistake it. God demands nothing short of absolute adoration and complete devotion in what we think, do, and say. We are to love one another. In the same way, we like to always look out for number one. We are to love those whom we encounter, our neighbor, each other, in the same manner that we look out for ourselves, if, if not even better. It is not simply enough to consider them or to think about them. We are to treat them as we would treat ourselves and even better with the same level of importance, dedication, and concern that we have for our own well-being. Love God, love your neighbor. That's the whole law in a nutshell. Are you getting uncomfortable yet? Hmm? I know I am. What started out as a nice phrase, as a marketing slogan, as, and then we realized was actually in existence from all of history, actually turns out to be quite a command. A command that simply we can't keep. The reality is, as much as I say I love God, as much as I want God to be first in my life, and I think he is, I often don't live that way, let alone think this way. And as much as I like to think that I love my neighbor, all it takes for me is to start thinking about another person, maybe what they said or did, and I start to get all judgy. The problem, though, is when that demand is given to love God, to love one another. The first thing I do is I look into myself, right? We look into ourselves to meet that demand of the law. How can I love God? How can I love each other? What is the things that I can do to fulfill this? But ultimately, it's not a matter if we can keep this command. We simply cannot. The question is, how long does it take us, out, take us to figure out that we fail in each and every way at loving God and loving another, at least in our own strengths and abilities? The time has come for us to stop looking at ourselves for the answer to the solution, to that ability to meet these commands, these demands of the law. Instead, let's look to him, he, who can help us. You see, Jesus came for this reason. He became one of us so that he can rescue us from this trap of thinking that somehow we can do this. He alone loved God with his entire heart. He alone lived a perfect life. He alone loved his neighbor as himself, if even not so much more, because he went to the cross for them. The son submitted himself to the will of his father. He fulfilled the law, each and every aspect of it in every single way. He did all of this because we couldn't do it, even though we must do it. You see, Jesus and what he has done for you and for me, he gives to us as a free gift. He delivers us from the law's demands and threats. Because when the law says, love God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself, or else, we say, we can't do this. But Jesus says to you and to me, I have done it for you. This completed work of Christ comes to you and to me today from his perfect life through the cross, through the waters of your baptism. The perfection that is required of this commandment. Love the Lord your God with your whole heart, with your whole mind, and with your entire being. 
that completion, that perfection that Jesus lived, how he loved his heavenly Father perfectly, comes to you through the cross, through your waters of baptism, and now his perfect love and thought, word, and deed to the Father becomes yours. The perfection that is required of this commandment, love your neighbor with your whole heart, mind, and being, is given to you today from the one who lived and loved others perfectly, even to the point of death for them. This love for others, this completion of the command comes to you from him who went to the cross, who loved others perfectly. That completed work of Christ is counted to you through the waters of your baptism. And now his perfect love for others in thought, word, and deed is your perfect love for others in thought, word, and deed. Love God, love others. In Christ, absolutely. Because we are in Christ flowing from his love for us, we are then empowered to love others. Not under obligation, not under demand, because he freely loved us and we joyfully wish to love those around us. Our desire to live out our lives loving God and loving each other is no longer a demand of perfection. On the contrary, because of what Christ has done for you and for me, it is a perfect expression of how Christ lived his love for us and for you and how we indeed can, in Christ, love God and love others for his sake. Amen. Now we'll do it. Please rise. The creed is the church's word in response to the word of God. So let us join together today confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, the, one of the earliest organized statements of Christian belief. People of God, what do you believe? I believe God. Please be seated. This time I would invite uh, to come forward the officers of the uh, LWML, the Lutheran Women's Missionary Society. Jane Barnhart, uh, President, Edie O'Brien, Vice President, Marge Murray, Secretary, Doherty Ford, Treasurer. Dear sisters in Christ, you are to serve our Lord as officers of our LWML. Hear what Holy Scripture has to say about those who serve in the church. Let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor, for each will have to bear his own load. Let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, especially those who are of the household of faith. 
in the presence of God and of this congregation, I install you as officers of the LWML in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now invite uh, the rest of the LWML uh, to come forward, please, uh, lining up here across the front. So all of those who are in the LWML, if you could come down this morning. As the ladies of the LWML line up across the front of the church here, we see this as a visible sign of offering and sacrifice of their service to our Lord. Sisters in Christ, come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deed toward the children of man. In holy baptism, the Holy Spirit has called us to faith in Jesus Christ and has enlightened us with gifts for faithful discipleship and for acts of service on behalf of our neighbors. In the Holy Supper, the Holy Spirit gathers us from the four corners of the earth to receive the Lord's body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins and unites us to Christ and to one another in joyful fellowship. We rejoice in the gift of the Holy Spirit who through Holy Scripture comes to us and opens our eyes to see the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ and the needs of our vulnerable neighbors, both near and far. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, you have showered your people with many and various gifts. We thank you for calling these women to declare your glory amongst the nations here and abroad through their faithful witness and loving hospitality. Continue to fill them with your Holy Spirit to reach out and to work with neighbors from various ethnic, language, and cultural groups in the extension of your kingdom. Amen. Amen. Sisters in Christ, be strong and courageous, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Almighty and most merciful Lord, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. You may return to your seats.
prayers this morning we remember with celebration and great joy the return of Tim Gabbert back to our to our fellowship our midst as he resumes his duties as a principal he has been missed we also remember Dwayne Fritz who has entered into hospice care a ginger Coates who is undergoing surgery this week and the Apple family as they anticipate the arrival of baby Philip let us rise for prayer Trusting our, in our loving and almighty God who abundantly provides for us, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Almighty God, you search our hearts and have seen our sin, and yet in your love have reconciled us to yourself through your Son. Give us your spirit, the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ that our lives may grow in devotion to you for the salvation you have so graciously given to us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Guide, we pray, our congregation in life and witness. Give us your grace so that in a land where strife is too common, we will be a place of peace. In our divided nation, make this, your congregation, a gathering place of hearts united in you, who extend your kingdom, your welcome to all. Inspire all the members of your congregation to love this place where your name is invoked and your grace proclaimed. Lord, in your mercy. For the mission of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League in this congregation and throughout the world, that every heart will beat with your love and all hearts extend your hand of service to others. Through the faithful gathering of mites, may Lutheran women in mission continue to encourage us to put all that you have given us into the mission of reaching the lost and erring. Lord, in your mercy. For the daily bread that sustains us in life, for food and health, for housing and clothing, for employment, for moderate weather, for justice and peace in our community and nation, that in every time of abundance and time of need, we may know your peace in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Comfort, O Lord, all who are in trouble, or want sickness, or any other adversity, or though, and though and we celebrate those who have overcome these things with by your power and grace, we remember especially Tim Gabbert as he returns to us, Dwayne Fritz, Ginger Coates, and the Apple family. Grant healing, courage, and steadfastness to all where it is needed, and especially those who suffer for your name's sake. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven.
receive the benediction the Lord has placed upon his people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go now in peace, go now in peace, may the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Go now in peace, go now in peace, may the love of God surround you everywhere. Everywhere.